Well, hallelujah, friends, blessings, and welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle, and Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, the people of God say, hallelujah. Well, friends, today is June the 9th of the year 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, our text this morning is going to be taken out of Romans chapter 11 and verse 22, which says, Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. On them which fail, severity, but toward thee, goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. Now, friends, that's a severe warning, one that we should pay much attention to. And everybody wants to focus on texts, for instance, like 1 John chapter 4, where it says, God is love. And they want to focus to such a high degree on the love of God that they forget the highest command of Scripture is to fear God. Messiah himself said, fear God who has the ability to cast your soul into hell. And that's what our text is telling us. Let's look at it again. Behold, therefore, the goodness of and severity of God. There's two sides of the coin. There's the goodness of God, if we are obedient, and there's the severity of God, if we fall away. It says, on those which did fall away, severity, but toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shalt be cut off. Now, I'm not here to debate this morning the idea of once saved, always saved. If you read the Bible, you know that that's a false claim. That's a false teaching. But what I do want to do is I want to focus on the passage of Scripture that deal with this severity of God so that we can be sure that we not only do not cross over the boundary, but we don't even get close to the boundary. So instead of focusing this morning on the idea of God's love, which is absolutely desirable and poured upon us without measure. I want to focus on the other side of the coin, God's hate, because the Bible is very clear in telling us that there are things that God hates. For instance, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 16, we are told these six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. So basically, there are six things that God hates, and the seventh he absolutely abhors. And so let's look at these for a moment, examine ourselves to be sure that these things don't lie within our hearts, even in hidden places. God hates, in verse 17, a proud look, someone who is arrogant, someone who thinks too highly of themselves, someone who thinks that they are better than others. Someone who thinks that they deserve favor simply because of the way that they live and the things that they're doing. And so what is it that God looks for in his people? Well, what is the opposite of pride? Humility. And humility is an act of service. It's an attitude of service. Where pride seeks to be served, humility serves. And so God hates a proud look. He hates a lying tongue. A lying tongue could communicate gossip. A lying tongue could be interpreted as someone who misconstrues someone else's character. A lying tongue could be an example of someone who takes advantage of others to excel themselves. A lying tongue could be someone who sows discord and disharmony. Next, it says he hates hands that shed innocent blood. This could be an example of taking advantage of the weak, taking advantage of the poor, taking advantage of the susceptible. It most certainly deals with that of murder. But murder is an action that derives from the heart, from a spirit that envelops many different things. God hates a heart that devises wicked imaginations, who is always sitting around plotting different ways to commit different evils. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. Once the plot has been developed, now the feet that run to carry it out. God hates a false witness that speaks lies with a direct intention of defaming someone. This would be acted out by someone who is jealous of another and for the very reason of the jealousy that lies within their heart, for spite, they lash out at others. And finally, number seven, the one that God detests the most 
is he that sows discord among the brethren, not just among the common man, but in the family, the brotherhood of God. His purpose in life is to destroy relationships among the people of God. But now let's go back and look at these just for a moment and let's flip them. If these are the things that God hates, what does God love? Well, God loves a humble person. God loves an honest person, even to their own peril. They still tell the truth. God loves someone who protects the innocent, someone who sticks up for the underdog. God loves someone who keeps their thoughts in check, does not allow their mind to run away with wild imaginations. Someone who is constantly meditating and pondering and thinking on the words of God and how they can live them out in their lives. God loves someone who is constantly seeking ways to serve others. God loves those who are truly happy when others succeed and where others succeed. And God loves someone who is forgiving and a peacemaker, who is bringing people together in fellowship. The Bible also tells us in Psalm chapter 5, verse 5, that God hates all the workers of iniquity, those who practice a lifestyle of sin. He tells us in chapter 11, verse 5, that the Lord tries the righteous, but the wicked in him that loves violence, his soul hates. He tells us in chapter 10, verse 3, for the wicked boast of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord hates. You see, friends, the difference here is between the natural and the spiritual. And before we became spiritual beings, we lived in the natural. So we can identify with many of these characteristics that God hates. But now that we have been reborn, now that we have become new creations, we are not only to realize that this goodness resides within us, but we are to continue in this goodness, live out this goodness. And that's our call day by day. And the only good in us is what the Lord has placed there. A new heart with new desires. But we can't be satisfied with the desires themselves. We have to act upon those desires. We have to love others. We have to care for others. We have to serve others. We have to read our Bibles. We have to pray. We have to witness. Because these are the desires that the Holy Spirit gives us. And we are to become more faithful in how we live these out and more creative in how we live these out on a day-by-day -day basis. So even though our text is on the severity of God and our subject was on the things that God hates, we are overwhelmed by the love of God that encourages us to continue in his goodness. Truly, friends, what a good God we serve. Let the fear of God motivate you. Let the love of God surround you, envelop you, cover you, and walk in the goodness of God this day, my friends. Now, as he, our Lord, wills, and until tomorrow, friends, I love you. I'll see you on the next video.